Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maureen O'Donnell. I'm a Yudhikali elder. And I'd like to thank the Art Gallery for asking me to do the Welcome to Country. It uh, happens every year. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Pro Heart for his, uh, this award, a sort of great award. And every year our people fill in for it and uh, apply for it. So it's really great. So. With that, I'd like to welcome us all here tonight and I hope you all have a wonderful time. And again, welcome to everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Councillor Maureen Clark, Chair of the Broken Hill Regional Art Gallery Advisory Committee. And I welcome you to the Regional Art Gallery of Broken Hill, the oldest regional art gallery in New South Wales, established in 1904. Although the gallery was only located to this lovely old building in 2004. Beginning as a hardware emporium in 1885, this building has been refurbished and has won numerous heritage awards. Housing over 2,000 artworks, valued at over $9 million, the building is almost a work of art in itself. The gallery and the artworks are maintained by the Broken Hill City Council and we welcome the Mayor, Daria Turley, to speak on behalf of the city. Hello everyone. Um, Firstly, can I acknowledge the Wulakali people, the Barkindji Nation, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and thank Aunty Maureen for the warm welcome to country. Um, and, you know, it's especially important in this time of COVID that, you know, we recognise and, uh, and value the ancient wisdom of our Aboriginal community. And here we are, um, the Outback Art Prize, the Pro Heart Outback Art Prize is the most prestigious prize that we have in Broken Hill and certainly I believe in Australia. And I just want to recognise our patron Rayleigh Hart and, um, and all the contribution the Hart family pay to make sure that this prize stays strong and stays relevant for all artists, but more importantly, the interpretation of culture for all of us today. Um, this is the first time, or maybe the second time in 25 years, I've missed the opening. So I'm glad I'm going to be able to watch it online and that we can all share in this because that's so important. The part I'm going to miss the most, and I'd say this to everyone, is when they announce the winner because that's when the room absolutely shows, you know, how they feel about the artwork and how pleased they are, or sometimes, yeah, maybe not so. It's an exciting time and, you know, for all of us, um, enjoy tonight's uh, launch and the winner and, you know, take the time over the next couple of weeks if you're in Broken Hill to pop into the art gallery and have a look and uh, celebrate all those artists. We've had a record nomination, so congratulations to the finalists and enjoy tonight. And uh, thank you to all our staff at the art gallery for making sure that Broken Hill didn't miss out on this prize. And thanks again to the Hart family and, and Rayleigh Hart. Thank you, everyone. The Pro Hart Outback Art Prize attracts a growing number of entries every year but 2020 was a record year. 474 entries were received from all over Australia. Could COVID-19 lockdowns have anything to do with this number? Regardless, this number had to be moderated and reduced to 23 by a selection panel who individually assessed each entry online and then came together socially distanced, of course, for a final decision. This was done smoothly and efficiently, thanks to the technical expertise of our gallery staff members, Jade Kerrin and Blake Griffiths, under the professional supervision of gallery manager, Tara Callaghan. 
Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in this evening to the 2020 Pro Heart Outback Art Prize. I miss seeing everyone's smiling faces in the gallery, but I'm also excited that we're broadcasting this year's event online, as I'm sure we'll be reaching new audiences and re-engaging with people that we haven't seen for a while. A special thank you to Arnie Maureen for her welcome to country, and a big thank you to the gallery staff, particularly Jade, um, who've made a massive effort to get this event online this year. The Pro Heart Outback Art Prize was renamed in 2016 in recognition of the Hart family and their continued contribution to the arts in Broken Hill. I'm so glad that you'll all get to hear from Rayleigh Hart tonight as she is a genuinely kind and generous sponsor and a de very dear friend of the gallery as well. Every year when the prize is on, we get queries about the theme of the Outback. What does the Outback mean? Does it need to be a landscape work? Does it need to represent the outback? Well, the outback by standard definitions means the remote and inland districts of Australia. And if you trust Google, that makes up for about 70% of the Australian continent. But it's also worth noting that these boundaries, lines and perceptions have been made in colonial times and people might have their own interpretation of the Australian outback. And that's why every year we encourage artists to think about the spirit and diversity of the Outback and what it has to offer. And every year without fail, we're always surprised and impressed by the range of interpretations and forms. This diversity is really important to us as a gallery, and we want to continue to encourage artists to create and engage, particularly in this challenging time for our world. Now, I won't hold you up any longer. We're getting to the exciting part of the evening. I want to wish all of the 23 finalists the best of luck, and I really hope to see you all in the gallery to visit the show while it's on. Thank you. The Pro Hard Outback Art Prize is a $23,000 acquisitive art prize, which is bestowed through the generosity of the Hart family. Pro Hart, a member of the Brushman of the Bush, was one of Australia's best known contemporary artists, but was also a salt of the earth, good bloke. Since his death in 2006, the Hart family have continued to sponsor the Outback Art Prize in Broken Hill, and Ray Lee Hart is the much loved matriarch. And we are delighted to have been able to sit down and have this conversation with Rayleigh. Pro, Pro just loved Broken Hill and he loved the arts here. Um, always tried to help Broken Hill. Uh, he promoted the uh, St Patrick's race day and he did that for years and um, yes so at the time I mean there weren't a lot of others that were painting and um, others used to think of oh, you know painting isn't a uh, isn't for a man sort of thing kept promoting things and then other artists started uh, to come forth and paint. He'd always help. I mean, it didn't matter who, who they were. Um, if they came up here to the gallery, Um, they would come up and ask Pro for advice and different things and uh, Pro would always give them uh, paint and paint brushes and canvases and um, said, well, you know, now you go and um, uh, paint, but he used to say, paint what's in front of you, um, don't try. Don't try and paint something. Don't do that. He said, go walk out in the backyard and he said, and you'll always see something. He said, paint that. 
Yeah, I think um, when um, they named the Pro Heart Art Exhibition, um, it was such an honour to, to be uh, named after Pro. Everybody knows about it and talks about it. I mean, it doesn't matter where you go, people talk about it. And yeah, I, I think it's a great thing for Broken Hill. I, I just think it's fantastic. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family. And um, I'm sure that it means a lot to the Broken Hill people here. I know whether uh, you could paint or not, um, we, you would always get a good crowd um, to come and have a look at those that have put uh, paintings in. I'd just like to wish all the artists well, with the paintings that they've put in this year, and uh, I think that um, last year and the year before, uh, we've seen some really good, really good work. And uh, yeah, and I'm sure Pro would have loved to have still been here and backed everybody. Eighty percent of Australians live within 50 kilometres of the coastline. Very few of the remaining 20 percent live in the real outback. The Pro Heart Outback Art Prize celebrates all that is unique to our wonderful outback environment. The harsh and often desolate environment with a richness of colour that has its own beauty. Desert plains and rugged mountains, lush wetlands and dry creeks, wildlife and indigenous heritage, the hardy souls who inhabit the outback, indigenous and non-indigenous, and the different interpretations through paint, textile, carving, craft. All entrants are to be congratulated for their entries. And the finalists are Max Berry, Surrey Hills, Ian Ma, Wilcannia, Eulen Murray and Rachel Burns, Bega, Wayne Elliott, Charlie Mont, Phil Drummond, Cessnock, Lindy Brody, Tennant Creek. Clark Barrett, Broken Hill. Mike Staniford, Crow's Nest. Graham Armstrong, Broken Hill. Amanda Penrose Hart, Potts Point. Helen Earle, Oxford Falls. Ross Potter, Willoughby. Patrice Wills, West Pennant Hills. Anne Evers, Broken Hill. Hamish Donaldson, Red Hill, Mirko Guidon, Marrickville, Kathy Ellum, Hansonville, Margaret Ambridge, Maylands, Alice Blanche, Hawthorne, Fran Callan, Glen Alter, Geoffrey Harvey, St Peter's, Amala Groom, Bathurst, Jason Hamilton, North Fitzroy. Finally, the reason we are all here tonight, to find out the winner of the 2020 Acquisitive Pro Heart Outback Art Prize, and of course, the runner-up. 
We have given that very difficult decision to Susie Muddyman, OAM. Susie is the Gallery Director, Tweed Regional Gallery and Margaret Ollie Art Centre, New South Wales. A highly regarded leader of the gallery and museum sector in Australia, Susie has always had a strong interest in and a commitment to enhancing gallery performance and presenting innovative and dynamic exhibitions. What did Susie make of the 2020 Pro Heart Outback Art Awards? Hi everyone, I hope you're all enjoying the online version of the prize this year. It's such a pity we can't be there to share in these celebrations and meet the artists. I was really looking forward to visiting Broken Hill myself. I've been a few times now and have always had a great time there. Thank you to Auntie Maureen for your welcome. I also acknowledge and pay tribute to Elders past and present. I'm at Tweed Regional Gallery in Moolambar, speaking from Bundjalung country. Over to my left is stunning Mount Warning Wollumbin, such a majestic and spiritual landform. Thank you for the invitation to judge this year's prize. It's a real honour, although it was a tough job as the calibre of entries was so good. Thank you to my colleagues who are involved in shortlisting for the prize. We were all impressed by the great range of media. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Tara and her staff at the gallery. The team works so well together. And a particular thanks to Jade and Blake for helping me out. But most importantly, I'd like to congratulate all of the artists who entered the prize. The vast number of entries is clearly indicative of the significance of the arts, especially in times like this. The visual arts add so much to the well-being of our communities, so thank you to all of the artists for entering. Artists have certainly chronicled the times for centuries, and 2020 has been a year that we'll never forget. Also, I consider it very brave of artists to put themselves out there to be judged alongside their peers, so thank you to you all. Okay, so now on to my decisions about the winning artworks. So Ross Potter, Dry Goenna. The artist has skillfully imbued this exquisitely detailed drawing with solemnity. Apart from the more obvious sadness of this once majestic reptile being very dead, the sadness has somehow been intensified by the artist's clever choice to draw it over two sheets of paper. It's a poetic work, this prehistoric looking creature that has survived and evolved yet is now dead due to the harshness of the environment. I see this work as being about the fragility of life in the environment and it being drawn in graphite too, a medium which can be so easily erased. Amanda Penrose Hart, Dusk. I love the size of this work. It's like a slither of the landscape. The format has a sense of continuity, like a view from a train window that keeps on coming. It gives us a real sense that the landscape of this country is seemingly endless, and yet there is a powerful sense of place in this painting. The colour palette and the application of the oil paint is atmospheric. The painting is textural like the landscape itself. There's something mystical about dusk, even transformative. It's a beautiful work. Lindy Brody, Police Plane over Singleton. A very striking and strong work. When I first saw this one, I sensed there was a narrative that accompanied it. The, paint, the painter is definitely telling us a story. The aerial perspective is captivating too. We get a real sense of the size of the landscape she is depicting, and yet our eyes are drawn to the intriguing detail of the passengers on the plane. Helen Earle, The Fossicker's Repose. This is a ceramic work and one that I was drawn to early on. The implements are harsh, yet they imbue a fragility about being ceramic that belies their robustness and their purpose. The artist has created a still life that is somewhat ironic, as these tools perform solid, hard toil of a fossicker's everyday existence. They are hardly the usual items of a domestic still life. No vases or teapots here. These are hard-working tools, yet rendered with intricate precision from fragile materials. 
I love that there is seven implements too, a prime number, a number that is only divisible by one in itself, somehow adding a quality of the essential to the story of this fossica. Okay, now second prize I have awarded to a work called Contained and Baked in the Desert by Anne Evers. I was particularly drawn to this work as it references these COVID times so well. Drawn to the idea of the work's containment, like the isolation we are facing, and the fact that Anne has used baker's loaf tins. It's sort of a play on that idea that so many people are baking at home, making sourdough, etc. But basically, the idea of starting from scratch. I like the idea of the domestic too, using what's close to hand. That metaphor of baking, quite literally the ingredients are from the landscape. Plants and fibres and seeds that have been collected from the landscape which have also been baking in their environment due to climate change. I like the juxtaposition of baking or creating something new as a way out of COVID isolation. The tins are more robust while the ingredients are more fragile but the results, results give us something to hope for. And first prize I've awarded to a beautiful drawing called Struggling to Remember by Margaret Ambridge. This beautiful drawing was always a standout for me. It references the bushfires and it's about rejuvenation and hope. I see a marriage of meaning and materiality in this work as the artist has used charcoal from the fire and added actual raindrops to her work, literally trying to bring the landscape back to life. It's a collaboration with nature. It has a beautiful and brooding quality about it, a feeling something like the aftermath of a traumatic event, but there's some relief offered by, via the raindrops of rejuvenation. I also enjoy the fact that this beautiful drawing has the look of a lithograph with its sweeping swirls of charcoal like ink over the stone. Congratulations to all of the artists. I hope you all enjoy the exhibition and that some of you will actually get the chance to see the show for in real life in the gallery. Thank you so much. What a great outcome. I'm sure you all had the winner picked out. Don't forget, we welcome your input into the People's Choice Award. You can make this digitally on the Broken Hill Art Gallery website. And to help you with your choice, the digital catalogue of all works seen tonight is also available on the Art Gallery website. Thank you for your company tonight and I hope you have all enjoyed the show. Please stay online for a special treat. Local group Clouded will perform a musical item for your enjoyment. <laughs>